Good morning. This is Jorge Izquierdo, Vice President of Market Development for PMMI. Welcome to the Thailand Packaging Machinery Market Webinar. You are currently muted. Um, if you want to make a, a question, uh, any comments, please go ahead and use the uh, chat box on the bottom left of your screen. I will be keeping an eye on it, and uh, you can make a question at any point, or if not, we're going to allow the, some time at the end for, for Q&A. So earlier this year, uh, PMI engaged with uh, Converging Knowledge. It's a consultant firm uh, to help us conduct this uh, research. They interviewed 50 end users and 10 suppliers, uh, agents, OEMs in Thailand trying to, to have a, a better idea of the trends and drivers uh, pushing the demand for uh, packaging machinery in Thailand. The information on this webinar, uh, the report that I, I'm going to make reference uh, on this webinar, you can download it directly at uh, pmmi.org slash global. I'm also using some uh, information from uh, other reports. Uh, I would recommend you to, to take a look to all our research at pmi.org slash research. So um, what I'm trying to cover today, basically it's uh, number one, uh, kind of a general idea on the economical and political highlights of Thailand. The current packaging machinery demand, uh, some regional packaging formats and end user markets uh, relevant to, to Thailand. Uh, the drivers and trends supporting the packaging machinery demand. Uh, I'm going to go down and trying to be as specific as uh, pointing out uh, the best sell prospects for uh, packaging machinery, and then kind of briefly uh, summarize, you know, the, the conclusions of this of this presentation. Well. Thailand is the second largest and the fourth most uh, populous economy in Southeast Asia. It accounts for uh, about 11% of the population and 16% of the gross domestic product. Thailand is part of uh, an economic group named uh, Asian. Asian, it's um, going to highlight here, you know, it includes all these countries um, around Thailand. That's uh, Indonesia, Malaysia. Philippines, Singapore, uh, Brunei, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. I'm making reference of this because uh, Thailand is uh, pretty much a manufacturing hub for the region, mainly for uh, ASEAN, but also for uh, Southeast Asia as well. Uh, the, uh, Thailand is currently under a military rule um, following the, the Coup in May 2014, and I know that you know uh, when we talked about a military rule, it sounds kind of a little harsh. Uh, it, it's not the first time that Thailand has been under a military rule. It's been a couple of times already. They have been moving back and forth between uh, civil rule and military rule. Uh, all of these within relative uh, peace, relative peace. Um, and uh, what's interesting, you know, it's uh, not at this moment, but Thailand has been a constitutional monarch in, uh, in the past, and uh, its king is uh, very well respected, and it's considered kind of key in terms of all these uh, transitions, uh, peaceful transitions between military and civil governments. So while uh, uh, Thailand is under a military rule, I, I would want you to understand, you know, that, that that's, uh, that's happened in the past and that's not necessarily uh, meant a significant problem for the, for the Thai economy. It has some implications, but it's, it's just the way Thailand is, I would say. Now, in terms of um, the gross domestic product of Thailand, if we compared it against other ASEAN countries, we're going to see Indonesia, the largest country by population and uh, by GDP. But in terms of GDP, you can see that Thailand is second in the region, uh, followed by Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, uh, and uh, other, other countries. When we take a closer look at uh, Thailand and uh, we try to understand uh, what's 
what's happened in the past few uh, years, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the setbacks, you know, here in the bottom of the screen, you know, setbacks for the Thailand manufacturing. Of course, in 2001, we have a global financial crisis. We can see, you know, the, the blue columns represents uh, GDP. You can see how the GDP kind of dropped in 2008, 2009 with the financial crisis. It starts coming up in 2010. Then in 2010, uh, Thailand faced uh, significant floods, severe floods that affected the manufacturing operations. So uh, even though it was affected, it wasn't really horrible. I mean, we, it was pretty much uh, stayed the same uh, without uh, any growth in 2011. Then again, it recovered some of its growth in 2000, 2012. Uh, 2014, we got the military coup. Uh, while the military coup is it's not uh, creating a significant problem uh, in terms of stability, it does slow down uh, the economy. So that's what we're finding in, in 2015, uh, kind of relatively slow down in terms of the Thai uh, GDP. So what does this mean for, for packaging machinery? You know, we've been talking about Asian, uh, we've been talking about all these macro numbers. So let's, let's try to bring all these numbers down to packaging machinery. What we have on the screen right now, it's the imports of packaging machinery into Thailand from 2011 to 2015. As you can see, uh, obviously, you know, the effects, uh, uh, there are effects of the general economy of the demand of packaging machinery. Uh, the, in 2012, uh, the imports were around $472 million and then it started dropping in 13, 14, and kept dropping on 15. So I guess at this point, you might be wondering, well, what kind of stories is uh, PMI sharing uh, with us? You know, it's, it's a Thailand that the economy is not doing that well, where imports of packaging machinery have been declining consistently for the past four years. So why do I care about Thailand? Well, uh, it, it's about economical cycles. Uh, mainly in uh, developing countries, these cycles could be uh, a little more steep than in developed economies, but uh, we do believe that Thailand is now pretty much touching the bottom and uh, will start bouncing back uh, in coming years. And uh, there are several factors uh, that we are going to discuss uh, on this presentation of why, why we believe it. Uh, I'm going to take a kind of a closer dive into these numbers of uh, packaging imports just to give you a kind of a better idea of what's the situation uh, for packaging machinery imports in Thailand. Uh, on this uh, line chart, we have uh, the largest importers of packaging machinery into Thailand. We have Germany, China, Japan, Italy, uh, Taiwan, South Korea, and the U.S. Uh, if, we, if we want to look carefully at this and uh, take a look at the share of the market for each of these countries, we're going to find that Germany is number one and Italy is number two. This is pretty, pretty consistent in uh, many markets around the world. Uh, Germany and Italy, uh, both countries are very aggressive exporters of uh, packaging machinery. They have a significant presence uh, around the world. The third one, Japan. Uh, Japan has significant presence in Asia, uh, not so much around the world, but in Asia, and uh, of course, uh, because of uh, how close it is to uh, Thailand, China is number four. We have other uh, suppliers like uh, um, Taipei, Korea, uh, and other uh, countries. U.S. Uh, coming on seventh place with uh, just uh, about three over three percent of the share of the market. So pretty much the U.S. has a very small share of this market, uh, significant presence from developed economies, Germany, Italy, and Japan. However, uh, we're finding a significant push from uh, low-cost uh, manufacturers like China, Taipei, and Korea and also a, a push from local manufacturers, uh, Thai manufacturers. So why do we think uh, 
Thailand is a good option uh, for exports for uh, packaging machinery, to export packaging machinery. When we track markets around the world, there are three main drivers that we, we try to follow very carefully. Demographics, disposable income, and the development of the retail networks. Uh, demographics for Thailand looks uh, pretty good. It's, uh, the country is growing, uh, fairly young country. Uh, with the disposable income growing. Uh, I, I, again, it's, the trend is growing, maybe not every year, but uh, trend in general is disposable income is growing. And certainly the retail uh, networks in Thailand has been uh, established more and more uh, around the country. Uh, currently, a significant number of uh, convenience stores uh, opening around. Uh, other trends supporting the demand for packaging machinery in Thailand, uh, government policies uh, are pretty much supporting the development. Uh, Thailand, uh, as I was saying, it's kind of a hub, a manufacturing hub, and they export a significant uh, number of products going from uh, automotive, um, electronics, and uh, maybe uh, those might be important for packaging, but even more important for packaging is uh, processed foods. Uh, Thailand is a significant exporter of processed foods to, to the region and to the world. And that's uh, one of the reasons uh, that we believe as the economy in the world starts to recover, Thailand exports are going to um, start increasing significantly. Uh, also, we're finding a significant uh, and steady urbanization in Thailand, uh, meaning more and more people living in the cities and relying on uh, supermarkets, convenience stores to acquire all the products that they need. As well, there's, uh, as the income, uh, disposable income is starting to increase, there's a growing demand of value-added products, uh, mainly when we talk about uh, more making products more convenient for the consumers. When we look at uh, the demographics in Thailand, we would see that a significant number of uh, Thai women are part of the workforce. And uh, uh, I'm, if I'm right, it's something around 70, 70 to 80 percent of women, uh, of Thai women are in the workforce. That means uh, they have less time to prepare foods at home. Uh, they do rely more and more on processed foods, uh, convenient packaging, convenient solutions to, to help them uh, prepare and cook foods for their families. Uh, more and more of the households are, are, are getting smaller, uh, maybe three, four uh, persons in the, in the household. Uh, that also has an impact in terms of the presentations, the size of the presentations, more and more uh, people in Thailand spend longer uh, hours, you know, more hours in uh, driving to and from uh, their work. They are looking for more convenient packaging, so it allows them to consume the products as, uh, as they move. And, and again, we, we mentioned, you know, uh, Thailand is kind of a, a key hub for the region, and uh, that's something that will keep uh, uh, being relevant in terms of uh, of growing in the in the coming uh, years. So one other uh, potential benefit that we are uh, specifically uh, for the U.S. you know in uh, in Thailand is the uh, TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, this trade agreement was signed May last year. Uh, the fact that we assign it does not mean it's started the implementation. First, it needs to be uh, uh, approved by the local, the local governments. But uh, in general, we have the, the impression that um, governments will approve it. Maybe it will take longer than expected, but the TPP uh, will become a reality in the next couple of years. Uh, what's the implication here? Well, when you look at the total landed cost, um, import duties plays a significant role. In this case, for packaging machinery, import duties are around 30%. So when the TPP is implemented, 
it's very likely that for a number of years, uh, members of the TPP will get a duty of, uh, we only need to pay a duty of 0% for packaging machinery being imported into Thailand. So as the natural competitors of uh, North American manufacturers are European, uh, I would say German, Italian manufacturers, as well as Japanese manufacturers, uh, we'll have some advantage against, well, significant advantage against uh, European manufacturers with uh, import duties as with implementation of TPP, the import duties for packaging machinery will drop uh, to 0% for the U.S. So this is uh, something to look at. Uh, this advantage normally, it's something that you can count on for maybe two years, maybe up to five years, normally not more than that. So it's just a window of, of opportunity. Uh, make sure that you're ready to take advantage of, uh, of this window of opportunity when, uh, when it opens. You know, it's, uh, it, it will be a window for, uh, for the U.S. For, uh, just for a few years. Very likely uh, Europe will sign agreements or will reach agreements with uh, different countries in uh, the Asian community or in Tha with Thailand. So the, the duties will be dropped for them as well. Now, I would want to talk a little more about uh, trends, uh, regional trends in Asia, and how these trends um, are affecting uh, Thailand. Of course, we already talked about rising disposable income. Uh, with, with this uh, rising of disposable income, it's more a, a trend of developing more premium products, uh, much more attention to uh, personal care, uh, health and wellness. Um, the second one we have on the list here is uh, positive impact of internet retailing. Uh, we're expecting that internet will uh, increase the demand for uh, packaging uh, and packaging equipment. Uh, consumer health and consciousness, more and more uh, people in Asia are aware of uh, health and uh, environmental, uh, the environmental situation. They, they are looking for products that won't harm their se themselves, looking for products that won't harm their environment. Um, and while they might not be ready to pay a significant premium for environmentally friendly products, they will certainly prefer an envir environmentally friendly product than, a, than a, a regular one, meaning if the, pack the packaging can play a significant role here, uh, the, the trick is how to do it without increasing significant, significantly the price of the products. In terms of the materials uh, being used uh, in the region, flexible is number one, as, uh, as in most of the regions. Uh, followed by, by PET bottles, uh, flexible aluminum, folding cartons. Interesting here, uh, while flexible plastics is number one, the category that is growing the fastest is PET bottles, uh, mainly because of the use in, the, in water, uh, ready-to-drink tea, and some other specialty drinks. Uh, in fact, uh, let's let's take a closer look at some of these, of these categories and, and how they are uh, behaving. On this table, what I'm uh, sharing is different products uh, and uh, the blue column, for example, on the first one, bottled water, the blue column represents uh, the absolute growth in containers. That means new containers that will be, in addition to the current sales, you know, will be added to the market between 2014 and 2019, and this is a number in billions of containers. So uh, that's the blue column. The yellow square, the orange square, uh, something that you can read on the right, this orange square, you can read on the right of uh, the chart and represents the growth. So bottled water will be, in, in terms of numbers, will be growing significantly. Uh, in terms of percentage, it's, it will have about uh, just over 8% growth. Um, that's one of the reasons uh, pet bottles are growing significantly. 
Also, we, we should take a look to ready-to-drink teas. You know, it's uh, significant size, uh, very reasonable uh, growth. And also, we were talking about uh, specialty drinks. Look at the growth of this category. It's over 14%. And while we, we are starting from a uh, uh, smaller base, uh, the growth in this category, it's, uh, it's significant. In addition to this, we should pay attention to drinking milk products, yogurt, uh, and sour milk products as well. Uh, those are um, specific industries that are going in a very healthy way in, uh, in the Thai market. And again, one of the reasons is uh, increase of water consumption, increase of uh, yogurt and sour milk, increase of ready-to-drink ready tea and, tea and uh, specialty drinks are all linked to health and wellness. So let's take a closer look now. We're, we're diving now into more into the details here. Let's take a, clue, uh, a closer look at the ready-to-drink tea and how uh, the, the tea is being sold in, uh, in the region. So pretty much, as you can see, again, you know, the column represents the volume, volume growth and uh, the square represents the compound annual growth between 14 and 19. So pet bottles are, are growing uh, from a very significant base. Uh, certainly the dominant container uh, for uh, ready-to-drink tea. Now, uh, it's also interesting, you know, to take a look in this market for uh, metal beverage cans, also growing significantly. And then some other, other containers, like thin wall plastic containers with a very small base right now, but growing at a significant pace, over 18% in the next few years. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look to another two or three products just to, to have a better feeling of what's being used, what type of containers are being used in the region. Uh, for yogurt and sour milk products, uh, as expected, thin wall plastic containers have a significant uh, size. They will keep growing significantly. Uh, shaped liquid cartons is one of the categories, uh, as we can see, that will we'll be having the fastest growth, uh, growing from, from not such a small base and growing a, at a very fast pace. Uh, this uh, now from a significantly smaller base, but it's still growing fast, uh, will be aluminum and plastic pouches, you know, the multi-layer uh, plastic pouches. Uh, we, we made reference to the shaped uh, liquid cartons, you know, where they are uh, uh, pulp-based containers, uh, sometimes made out of some type of paper. Uh, Again, you know, the, the thin wall containers and um, the, the pouches also playing a role in, in uh, yogurt and sour milk products. Specialty drinks, that's the, the last of the products that I, I wanted to look at for, uh, for the Asian uh, region. Uh, interestingly enough, this segment is significantly big for uh, metal cans, and it's growing very very strongly on, uh, on metal cans. So uh, we, we recognize the importance of uh, food and beverage for, uh, for packaging and uh, for Thailand. Uh, this chart shows the growth from 2011-2015. Uh, it's grown in, in uh, the local currency. Uh, that's okay, not, a, not an incredible growth, but a consistent growth. But what, what happens when we look at uh, the future? What's going to, what are we expecting to see in, in coming uh, years? Well, let's take uh, a look at the food and drink uh, behavior between 13 and 2020. We are expecting to have significant growth uh, from this year up to 2020 in terms of uh, food and uh, drink spending in Thailand. Uh, and not just how much food and drink is being spent uh, or consumed in Thailand, or will be consumed in Thailand, but also how much uh, food and drink Thailand will be exporting to other markets. 
So in this chart, uh, on the dark color, we have uh, exports. On the light color, we have the domestic market. So as uh, both uh, markets, you know, uh, we add up both markets, the opportunities for growth in the Thai uh, economy are, are, are significant for food, beverage, personal care, and pharmaceuticals. So again, uh, when we looked at uh, the Thai market, we should look not just uh, at the internal market, but uh, keep in mind that uh, Thai is a manufacturing hub and uh, they export significant amount of their products to the region. So uh, now talking more about, uh, uh, I, I touch about, you know, regional in Asia, specifically in Thailand, you know, what are the proportions of the materials being used in, in Thailand? Again, number one, we have flexible packaging with over 25%. Uh, significant, you know, with 24% are rigid plastics, and interestingly enough, in Thailand, glass is number three. Okay, so that's uh, kind of a little difference against the, the region. Uh, glass uh, is still a lot, being used a lot, uh, mainly in the brewery and uh, food products. Uh, it, it has a significant share. So let's keep moving. Uh, what's happening? What, what else is happening in Thailand that uh, it's pushing the demand for, for packaging machinery? Well, uh, wages and automation. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, we interview 50 uh, CPG companies, consumer packaged good companies in Thailand. Uh, and this is what they've been telling us. You know, it's basically since last year, uh, salaries increased 3.9%. Since two years ago, 9.3%, three years ago, 12.1%, five years ago, 18.6%. Uh, in terms of what they expect to see in the future in the next two to three years, 64 of them expect to see increases in, uh, in wages in uh, Thailand. Uh, the Thai government has established uh, a minimum um, wage uh, around the country. And of course, this is having an impact in terms of the costs for manufacturing uh, your, the products for uh, Thai CPGs. Uh, basically, what we're expecting to see because of this is an increase on demand, mainly on secondary packaging machine, machinery, uh, as they consider it uh, essential to contain the, the costs on uh, their manufacturing operations. So we went a little further and we asked uh, the people we interviewed, hey, well, wh what are you planning to buy? You know, what's, uh, what do you think is going to be the impact of uh, increased wage and uh, line automation? Well, yes, number one thing, it's uh, secondary packaging. By far, most of the CPGs uh, are considering investing on secondary packaging to balance uh, the increase in wages. Uh, we have also some increase on the end of the of line, as expected, with palletizers. Uh, interestingly enough, conveyors are not showing kind of a, a significant increase in, in terms of demand. Okay, so which other developments in, uh, uh, have we seen in terms of uh, impacting the demand for packaging machinery? Well, not surprisingly, uh, cost savings on materials. Uh, that, that's a, a common theme around the world. We, we've seen how the plastic bottles have uh, becoming uh, from kind of rigid to uh, a thinner wall, thinner wall, thinner wall to where the point that we're not exactly sure if they are rigid anymore and they are, once you open a bottle of water, basically it's, uh, it's, it's a flexible packaging almost. Uh, a trend for the smaller sizes, this is interesting. The trend for the smaller sizes being uh, driven by two reasons. Number one is health and wellness. Uh, Thailand is uh, uh, the country with the uh, second uh, um, significant incidence in terms of obesity uh, among the ASEAN countries. 
So uh, there's a significant concern. The government is uh, uh, educating um, citizens, but uh, more than anything, you know, it's uh, the the work of uh, social networks and the internet in terms of uh, educating consumers about uh, the quality of uh, nutrition. So a smaller sizes means less calories on one hand. A smaller sizes means less cost, maybe lower prices, and uh, the option to, to enter into, into different markets. So those two are combining for uh, pushing for smaller sizes. Again, as we were mentioning before, environmentally friendly products are important. Uh, if you can bring up an environmentally argu environmental argument to the table, uh, it's something that they will take into account. Again, you need to do it in such a way that you won't be increasing significantly the cost of the product. Uh, this could be, you know, from uh, using less materials, the type of materials you're using. Uh, in general, it's very, very close to the perception of uh, environmentally friendly that uh, consumers have. Uh, again, we have uh, slimmer shapes, uh, kind of cleaner look, more uh, value-added uh, containers, uh, more convenient containers, something that uh, makes life easier for consumers. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a, a number of regulations coming into, into play. Uh, we were talking how uh, Thailand export a significant amount of their products. When you're talking about exporting uh, processed foods, regulations are very uh, demanding. So this is, this, uh, among other things, you know, the type of regulations that uh, we, we need to pay attention to and then that in many cases offer opportunities for packaging machinery manufacturers. Now, in terms of uh, increasing capacity, so we asked uh, the companies that we interviewed, so what are your plans? Are you planning to increase uh, your capacity or, or what do you feel about it? Half of them said, you know, in the next two years, we're not planning to increase capacity. The other half said, uh, we're going to make some plant upgrades. We're going to open new facilities or both. So there's a, a significant number of investment in, in, uh, in the mind of uh, Thai companies. Now, when we were asking them, uh, well, what type of equipment are, are, are you looking to buy? Well, uh, as we said, you know, a significant number said, well, no, we're not planning to buy right now, and this is as of today. This, this can change as uh, the economy reactivates. Uh, but as, as we mentioned, a significant amount of secondary packaging in terms of uh, case packing, sealing, cartering machinery, primary packaging in terms of uh, form fill and seal equipment, vertical and horizontal. Uh, this is consistent with what we have seen in, uh, in terms of the use of flexible packaging. Also, uh, wrap, wrapping, bundling, palletizing, kind of uh, more on the end of the line. Uh, also co conveying and uh, feeding, orienting equipments. Um, and interestingly enough, the, the last one on the list, inspecting, detecting, and check weighing equipment. This is, uh, while this is relatively low on this, uh, on uh, the feedback we, we got from, uh, from CPGs, we are expecting this category to increase significantly because of the demand, uh, the push on regulations, new regu local regulations, and uh, regulations to uh, enter export markets. Okay. Now, in terms of how do they learn about, uh, about the, the packaging machinery? How, how do they uh, look for packaging machinery, the CPG companies in Thailand. Most of them, it's via trade shows, uh, mainly local trade shows, some international trade shows, uh, such as uh, Interpac and Pack Expo. Uh, when we talk about local trade shows, the majority of them made reference to uh, Pro Pack Asia as uh, the show for packaging in Thailand. Uh, 
uh, in terms of uh, additional source of information, of course, is uh, suppliers, uh, current uh, suppliers or new suppliers, uh, including in uh, between a, a mix of suppliers and others. We have uh, internet uh, that's taking a significant uh, share of way to communicate with uh, with end users. Uh, now we ask them uh, when you make a decision. Uh, for investing in packaging equipment, what are, are the key uh, factors that uh, influence your decision? Well, first of all, they, they said quality uh, in terms of uh, uh, a machine that uh, will deliver the product with the right quality. Then we have uh, operational and upfront cost. Um, to be honest, mainly big chunk of this is the upfront cost. Some of it is, yes, the operational cost as well, but uh, they do pay very close attention to the, to the cost. Uh, reliability, of course, making sure that you have a piece of equipment that you can uh, rely on for a consistent and, uh, uh, and uh, manufacturing to, to deliver product to the, to the market. And uh, the fourth one, uh, very interesting is uh, after sales service. Uh, it, of course, these two, reliability and after sales service, are, are closely linked. Eventually, a machine, uh, it doesn't matter how, how good it is, eventually it will need sales service. And the, the total experience, the final experience for the end user is closely linked with uh, after sales service. And of course, we have others like uh, brand reputation, uh, standing last, la not lost, but last the standing relationship, sorry for that, and some others. So uh, when we ask them, hey, when you buy packaging equipment, how do you buy it? You know, it's, it's financing a, bit, a big thing or, or not? Well, uh, about half of the respondents, they weren't really aware. They were more in operations. They were not aware of uh, financing options, but 42% responded uh, that full payment upfront, it's what in general they are used to. 6% uh, they, they don't have any decision, decision was made on headquarters overseas, and a uh, small percentage they, they are taking advantage of uh, lease some, or some other financing opportunities. So. Um, what are the, we asked this group, so wh what's your expectation in terms of uh, growth in investment for packaging machinery in the next uh, few years? And uh, uh, a few, you know, said, no, it might be shrinking, no growth, but significantly, as you can see here, significantly, they are suggesting a growth something between 1% and 7%. Uh, so we, we feel confident, you know, that uh, we're going to... Uh, see growth in, uh, at minimum on, on 4 to 5 percent on the time market for packaging machinery, demand for packaging machinery. In terms of competition, uh, who is in the, in the time market and how's, what's the perception for the different uh, suppliers? And uh, at this point, we're not going individually uh, by supplier, but in general, we're grouping them in, in com by country of origin. Well, uh, North American uh, suppliers are not well known in Thailand. They, there's just uh, a small presence. Uh, they are not well known. However, uh, and this on the good side, the quality, the precise quality of North American equipment is very high. It's pretty much e either close or at pair with uh, Europe and Japan. Uh, Europe, on the other hand, it's perceived as uh, mainly German equipment as uh, top quality, excellent equipment, uh, expensive, um, but again, you know, it's very reliable, uh, very well known, both uh, Italian and German equipment. Um, some concerns about after sales service, uh, in many cases, these companies do not have their own office, they work through agents, um, and uh, after sales service is an issue. 
Japan is uh, also a supplier of uh, top-of-the-line packaging equipment. Um, better position for after-sales service, it's closer to the market. Uh, very, other than after-sales service, the perception is very similar to European manufacturers. It's very good quality, uh, very reliable, um, better after-sales service. Sales service. China, now we're moving to, and I'm, I'm putting here China, but I mean here uh, China, um, South Korea, Taiwan, India, uh, other low-cost manufacturers in the region that have been entering uh, the Thai market in a very aggressive way. Uh, of course, uh, they are very competitive in price. Uh, most of the times with prices, uh, there will be about 50% of um, uh, European, North American, Japanese piece of equipment. So it's uh, very aggressive, very competitive. In general, not good after sales service. And finally, we get to the low hard suppliers. Uh, Thailand manufacturers of packaging equipment have been growing in past years, getting more um, sophisticated, still not ready to compete with um, equipment from uh, North America or Europe, uh, but certainly with a significant advantage in terms of service because of uh, being local. So many uh, small and medium uh, manufacturing operations might rely in low-cost manufacturers, either from uh, China, India, uh, Korea, or local suppliers from Thailand. But as soon as uh, their uh, operations start to speed up and they require more reliable and fast equipment, they will turn into North American European uh, equipment. Okay, so uh, we're getting close to the end of the presentation. Uh, we asked, you know, the uh, people that we interview, what are the most common um, way to distribute packaging equipment? And the first one is non-exclusive local agents and distributors. That was to be expected. Uh, exclusive local agents. Um, we, we normally not in, encourage our members to go after exclusive local agents unless they, they already have a, a, a long and a very uh, successful experience with a, a non-exclusive agent first. Final, then we have, of course, a uh, local sales office. Uh, that's, uh, I would say, maybe the preferred in terms of having a local presence, uh, having uh, service available locally. But of course, here it's, it's the balance between the investment and uh, the, the, the sales in the market. And. Um, with this, I, I would want maybe just to make reference to, to highlight some of the, what I've, what I've said, uh, some of the opportunities for North American manufacturers. Uh, again, certainly we, we are very confident that the Thai market is it's, uh, going to rebound in the next uh, few years. Uh, there might be you know, a slowdown here or there, but the long term trends, the drivers, uh, the indicators are, are all showing us that uh, the time market is full of opportunities uh, moving forward. Specifically for North American manufacturers, uh, the main problem is uh, we haven't been there, basically. Uh, we need to develop a presence. We need, at minimum, to establish uh, a local agent. Uh, if business can justify, it's a local office would be great. Uh, after sales service is key. You need to invest, if you're working with an agent, you need to invest in training your agent in making sure that uh, at least he's able uh, to rely um, information that will help you solve any problem that your customers have uh, in Thailand. After sales service is a most, and uh, it's something that uh, North American manufacturers need, need to take it seriously. Um, at this point, I'm, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to the questions and answers section. 
I hope this, uh, some of this information has been of value for all of you. Um, if you have any question, please, please go ahead and uh, write it uh, on their chat box on the lower left uh, of your screen. Going to, while I wait for, uh, for some questions to come, I'm going to make reference to a couple of, uh, of other um, products and services from PMMI. Uh, so next week, of course, if you're uh, attending this seminar on uh, the market in Thailand, you might be aware that next week we have uh, ProPak Asia in Bangkok. It's the, the packaging show for Thailand. Uh, we will have a, a, pav a pavilion um, at the show. We have a PMI, we'll have a booth. We'll have interpreters. We'll have uh, some other services at the booth. But maybe more, more importantly, we're organizing a reception on Wednesday, June 15 at 6.30 at BTEC and in the, at the venue. Uh, we're trying to make it easy for you guys. Uh, here, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, invite uh, some local um, leaders of, uh, of the manufacturing industry to share us uh, some insight on uh, what's happening within uh, Thailand in terms of manufacturing. We will also have a panel where we have uh, uh, agents and uh, other suppliers of the industry sharing their points of view on uh, the Thai market and uh, opportunities for uh, um, PMI members. Uh, so um, I have a question here. It's in terms of where do they, do you, where can you download the report? Uh, give me a second. Uh, okay, you can download the report. From here, you can go to pmmi.org slash global. You can download the report. Most of the information that I've shared today with you, it's uh, on this report. Uh, also, I would strongly encourage you to go to pmi.org backslash research. There you can find uh, the rest of the information uh, that I've been, uh, I've been sharing uh, with you guys. Uh, I have one other question. It's in terms of uh, opportunities for inspecting and uh, detection equipment. As I was saying, one of the uh, big opportunities for Thailand in terms of growth, it's uh, exporting, exporting of uh, processed foods. Uh, and I think that's going to bring a significant amount of uh, business opportunities for uh, detection and inspection equipment. Uh, it might take uh, maybe a year, two years for some of these opportunities to crystallize as uh, the rest of the region start of uh, speeding up. The economies are uh, start to speed up, but certainly the opportunities will be there. Um, also next week we are going to have a pavilion at uh, Fispal in Brazil, uh, another market presentation down there. And uh, if you're responsible for uh, the markets in Asia, next month we have uh, Propac China. We will have a pavilion in Propac China, and same, we'll have a reception. Uh, a presentation of market research about the Chinese market. That's going to be on July 14th, uh, Thursday, July 14th. So at this point, uh, we don't have any additional questions. I would want to thank you for your time. I hope you find uh, you found the information we shared here uh, interesting and valuable. We will follow up uh, this uh, webinar with uh, an evaluation and with a link uh, to download the report and uh, access additional information and services from PMMI. So again, thank you very much. Have a good day, and hope to see many of you next week at uh, ProPack Asia.